Hey, what's up everyone? Shane here with ROA Off-Road. I have something exciting to share with you today. This is going to be a full tour of the all new 2024 MDC. This is the family model. That means it has bunk beds, 17 foot box. It's a 17 family. The model number is actually XT 17 family. The HRT stands for hard roof tandem. XT is extreme terrain, but I'm gonna walk you around this trailer. As you can see, we do have the rear door. Now this, this tour is going to be, if you haven't noticed, it's gonna be over an hour long and I'm gonna go into insane amount of detail. If you're just looking for a quick walk around and you wanna see the inside, go down below, click on a link. We have a tour to a short version of this, but this video really is for those who are seriously interested. Here at ROA, we're all about teaching and educating the market and showcasing the product and teaching them really about the nuts and the bolts and how it's constructed, how it's built, how it's been manufactured. And I'm gonna do that. Right back here, you can see this is actually the kitchen in the rear and you have that door. So from the outside, I'm gonna give you kind of a feel of the layout so when we go inside, you know where everything's at. You see this little window, this is the bathroom. There is a wet bath in this trailer and we'll get into that later. And I'm gonna do this tour a little bit different than I've ever done any tours because generally I just kind of walk around and point out everything as I go. But I wanna break this into sections and you'll be able to skip ahead. You know, for you guys, sometimes you wanna know what's the components, what's the battery, the solar array, you wanna know the specs. Well, that's gonna be towards the end of the video. So we're gonna first talk about some of the features that I like the most about it. And then we're gonna go into some of the technical specs and everything, but trust me, we're gonna go through every single detail. You want that short tour? Go down below, click on the short tour. You wanna learn more information, you can go to our website, check it out. Over here, this is the bunk beds, like I mentioned. It is a family model, so you see these two windows. Those are at the bunk beds. This is the master suite area. It is an east-west bed, and you have a window at the foot of the bed and at the head of the bed. Now, I do wanna let you know that I have used this unit personally, this exact same unit. I've put almost 1,500 miles on it. Recently, we just get, got done with an adventure with MDC, the founder and owner of almost 20 years came out to the US. He brought his crew, his camera crew, Steve, which is one of the guys that you've seen on the videos in Australia, he came out and we just took him all over Utah. We toured the whole state, took him to Moab, did some pretty extreme off-roading and just got to know them as a company. Very cool, I'm really excited. And I wanna talk a little bit about the manufacturer and that's gonna be at the end. I wanna explain a little bit, give you a little history on the manufacturer, who they are. But one thing that I do wanna mention is their users, they're using these trailers, they're camping in these trailers. That truly equates to a different trailer than just something that's coming across an assembly line built by people that have never used their trailers. And that's something that's so important for me when I'm looking at manufacturers. That's a question that I ask almost every manufacturer, like, do you actually camp in the trailer? Do you actually use the trailer? And all of our manufacturers really do. And that's super, super important for you to understand. Now over here, this is the other side of the uh, master suite. It is a queen size bed. We'll get into those details later. And then this is the booth area. Like I mentioned, I wanna break this into sections so you can jump around and learn what you wanna learn. The first thing that I wanna talk about in this MDC, and it's one of the things that I really like, is the kitchens. Okay, one of my favorite things on this unit, the 17 family by MDC, is the kitchen area. Like I mentioned, I have camped in this unit for over a week, over a thousand miles, and the kitchen is incredible. Everything about this kitchen is just really, there's a lot of thought gone into this. And this is, this is the whole user thing that I'm talking about, is when the manufacturer uses the trailers, they understand what to look for. First of all, this whole mechanism right here, this steel L bracket that they've put this on, this looks like this is a bend and you have almost one eighth inch thick steel that is holding this kitchen in place. And then this mechanism, this locks in and you can see it's actually integrated into the track itself. I've seen some kitchens where they'll do this side track here and not an undermounted track. They'll do two side tracks and then they'll just 
uh, put the latch here on a you know an L tab and it's just that thing breaks or bends over time. When you think about it and you're off-roading, this thing is gonna be shaking around and it's gonna bust out and hit your door. So I just really like the way they've designed this. So you lift this up and then put that into its slot and then engage this switch and then you're gonna pull out this entire kitchen and when you pull it all the way out it will lock and engage out and i'm going to constantly point this out because what i mentioned before is how they're users of their product as you can see this little latch down this is something that i've never really seen on any off-road trailer and we've carried a lot of off-road trailers imports over the years and this is something you just don't see little details like this over here on the other side there's an additional latch that holds this down and you know it's funny as we've carried so many trailers and off-road trailers over the years you notice there's little things that should be part of the design that aren't in the design and the reason why i point these things out is because we've actually made mods for these so we had kitchens that would flop over but they didn't actually have these rubber grommets so they would sit over here and they just scratch things and break things and they they bounce up and down while you're off-roading because they didn't have tie downs that held it in place or rubber grommets that protect it those are the details that i'm talking about you know mdc is one of the original manufacturers to import trailers into australia into the us of this style of trailer and when you've been doing that for almost 20 years these are the little details you're going to see like a windshield then you move over to here you can see that we have a lot of cupboard space these come out and you have some space to put whatever you need and then also you have soft clothes and then these flip down to get out of the way um moving over to here we have another latch that holds this down in place also <laughs> this leg post i've dealt with leg posts for slide out kitchens in the past and <laughs> this is one of the nicest ones i've ever seen it actually if you come under here and you notice there's actually a port that they've designed for this to slide right into. And then there's a little mounting place that it goes right there. And then with your hand, you can put that into place and you can lock it in and it gives you more support. I've seen these with little butterfly clips where you have to get a, a Leatherman to latch and then they, they just kind of are dangling here wherever you can put them. Uh, it's just, there's a lot of thought into the design of these trailers. And that's the thing that I noticed as I was camping in this, I just was finding all of these little details. Something over here I wanna point out is, look at this, this is a rack for drying or putting storage, but you can see the, they're using these piano hinges. I mean, it would be really easy for them just to have two little hinges on this, but instead they go with a really premium quality piano hinge also with this setup on the actual backside over here. You can see they've used piano hinges. And then a little detail, look at this. So this is the arm that holds up this rack, which I'll show you in a second. And they've riveted, and then also they've done some welds on it. Uh, the, the attention to detail is really, really astonishing to me because most of the time you're just going to see rivets little attention to details here this thing is not these trays are not just sitting here in place there's a little latch right here and you'll see this pin as i pull this it will go out and over here you'll see this kind of comes out and then it turns and then when you lift this thing this tray will slide out and then you engage it right there and then you engage it right there stay in place and then you have some extra storage or a dry rack whatever you want to use this for you can put some food out here while you're camping or you can put your dishes coming over to this side we do have our kitchen sink and it is hot and cold water a lot of trailers on the market off-road trailers they'll only give you the option of cold water outside uh, some of them do will do hot but this is also plumbed into the trailer you can see that line going down there so with uh, the corrugated plastic that's protecting the lines it is all plumbed into the kitchen so there's no quick disconnects that you're having to <laughs> fight with half of the times because that's what it feels like you're actually fighting with them trying to plug them into everything it's just a little convenience uh something that you don't see on some of the off-road trailers in the market and then you come down over here you have a propane line of course you're going to drop this down through the hole right here and this is plumbed into the stove 
which is really cool because generally you'll get two, I've seen where you have two lines and you have to plug in the stove and then plug it into the trailer. This is already plumbed to the stove and all you need to do is remove this protective cover right there. And then you'll just engage this. And then there's a valve right here that opens it up and you have propane now coming to your stove. One thing I wanna point out is that protective cover. We sell a lot of off-road trailers and we've noticed over the years, those propane lines, if people are going through dirt and mud, they sometimes get gunk in them. And so we would do these modifications or retrofitting and give people protective covers, rubber things over them, just little things that you would wanna to buy to protect it. As you can see, it comes stock with the trailer. And that definitely is gonna be because they've probably experienced this in the last 20 years. They've probably had their customers reach out and say, man, my propane is getting all gummed up and they made sure there's a protective cover there. So open this up. This is the Thetford stove top. This is your larger burner and this is a 9,800 BTU uh, burner. And then these are your two smaller ones. And these are 6,300 BTUs on these little ones. Now, just as a comparison, we sell a lot of off-road trailers and the most standard stove top that you're gonna see on a slide out kitchen, the largest BTU burner is a 5,800. So it's large burner, doesn't put out as much heat as these small burners and their small burners are like 3,700. So these are once again, 6,300 and this is a 9800. I was out cooking with this and it was cooking very fast, more than, faster than I was used to. Of course, if you get those griddle cook tops, those are really great cook tops. But as far as like the stove cook tops, I've never experienced one that cooks as fast and as good as this brand right here. So very impressed with that. Okay, the next thing that you need for a kitchen is food. And this storage compartment has a spot for an outside refrigerator. Now in the 17 family, you do have a refrigerator that's built into the trailer on the inside, which I'll show you in a bit, but you can also have the option of having a outside refrigerator. This is something you would have to add yourself. This tray will come out and you can put any size refrigerator up to 95 liters that will fit right in here. So you could get a dual zone. I have a 65, 75 liter fridge fits perfect in here even that, like I mentioned, up to 95 liters on here. And this goes in, and I wanna point out, it does have two electrical options for your refrigerator. You have the 12 volt, this is like a cigarette lighter style, and then you have your Anderson plug. We would recommend that you get the Anderson plug set up. So if you're getting a fridge, pay the extra money to get the setup for that. It's gonna cost a little bit more, but the voltage coming out of that, it's gonna be better and it's it's gonna stay connected really good. Those 12 volt ones tend to not connect as well and be a little bit finicky from time to time. Right here, you also have a light as well as the light right over here. So awesome to have an extra fridge option. And I do wanna say this is ventilated for your refrigerator with filters, so you're not gonna get a lot of dust in here. And another thing about the kitchen, and the fridge. I've seen this over the years where you can get some dirt into some into the trailers. One of the things that MDC prides themselves in and is the seals on their trailer. And they say that a positive air pressure system is not necessary because they have some of the best sealed trailers in the market in Australia. And one of the reasons is because of this triple seal door. So you can see there's a seal right here. And then there's also a gasket right here and then you have another one right here. So this will go in and you'll have a triple seal. Also essential to this sealing good is these uh, latches. These are a cam lock latch. And as you can see, as when you close the door and you twist it, you'll see that it actually sucks in and creates that pressure. So it seals it nice and tight. So you'll be able to pull that in and we'll keep those doors sealed up and you're not gonna get a a lot of dust and dirt into your refrigerator area. Also, you everything is lockable. So you have keys to be able to lock everything up, which is essential. The last thing outside before we go inside and show you the inside kitchen is this little drop down tray. You got a little key that you'll be able to open this up with. And this is just some extra prep space that you have. So as you're cooking, you can throw your food here if it's done, or you can just be able to cut and prep or use the cutting board next to your stove. But you have a lot of options 
for this kitchen area. Another thing is maybe you need some other food or ingredients for your outside kitchen right here. This is a pantry for your kitchen. And there's something really cool about this pantry is I'll show you on the inside. It's a dual purpose pantry. So you can put your food out here and be able to access the food while you're out camping very easily. This was one of my favorite features in this trailer while we were out camping because we have the video guys, two dudes, and they're big guys and they eat a lot. And we were putting out snacks here and they could come in out here anytime, grab a snack and go to work. They were staying in the 15 4E trailer. So we didn't want them coming in our trailer, but they could come and grab food whenever they wanted. But you can also access this pantry from the inside and I'll show you when I go in and show you the inside kitchen and this storage area. Okay, let's move over to the kitchen. As you can see, we do have the same stovetop that's outside, inside. And this was amazing. When we were out camping with MDC, it got really cold at night. It even snowed, so my wife was in here some mornings cooking breakfast for my daughter. And it was nice to have an inside and an outside kitchen or stove and sink. Now you can close this down and this gains some extra counter space. And we were using this at night to brush our teeth one of us was in the bathroom, the other one was out here and we were putting all of our toiletries here, which was pretty nice. Above the stove, of course, you have your fan and your light above the stove. And then coming over here, we have our sink with hot and cold water, obviously. Now we do have a modification and this is one of the really cool things about ROA Off-Road is we've been doing this so long, we've gotten pretty good at finding lots of different modifications people like and want. And so we've done a deeper sink in here and it also has a cutting board so you can use it as a countertop. This also does drop down and duels as a counter space as well. Moving over here, you have some more counter space with outlets to be able to plug in miscellaneous things like your coffee pot or your blender. You also have this 12 volt USB port and this 12 volt cigarette lighter port. Talking about counter space, we can move over here while you're cooking or prepping. You also have this counter space and it's right above your pantry area where you can grab your food, set things out here and move it over as you're prepping. You do also have an outlet right here, which is very nice in case you wanna throw your blender here and your coffee pot over there or vice versa. You have a lot of counter space in this trailer, in this kitchen area. And above this area, you have a microwave. Listen. I love microwaves. I know some people don't, but when I just want to heat up something really quick, I love to be able to turn on the microwave and heat it up in a few seconds. Also, this does work off grid through the inverter and battery system. Now let's move over to the fridge. One of the little things that I really like about MDC is they've added this little latch on the fridge. And at first I thought, man, why are you doing that? Because the fridge itself has a latch, but it's just an extra precaution and an extra detail to hold this fridge in place while you're off-roading. Now, when you open this up, this is a fridge built by Norcold. It is a 12 volt refrigerator. So it's gonna work off of your solar and lithium, zero propane, and it is pretty deep. It's a lot bigger than it looks in the videos at first glance, I thought this fridge wasn't big. It's 152 liters. That's 5.3 cubic feet. You also have the, this freezer that is 18 liters. Total fridge volume with freezer and fridge is 152 liters. And it works really good at first. I had it on full blast and everything was getting too cold. My ice cream froze like it was a rock and I had to let it thaw out for 10 minutes before eating it. So I turned it down. It's also very efficient. It uses anywhere from four to seven amps. That's 48 to 63 watts. So very efficient refrigerator. And there you have it. That is the kitchen setup of the MDC 17 family. That is an outside kitchen, inside kitchen. Personally, I love that you have two kitchens because on those rainy days, you don't wanna be cooking out in the rain or in the mud or snow. So we were using this kitchen constantly on the inside and outside. A lot of times I was cooking outside, my wife was cooking on inside. Even if you're cooking a big meal for a group of people, you can cook twice as fast because you have two stoves. So there you have it. Let's move on to the next section, which is going to be the creature comforts of the 17 family. The 17 family is very comfortable. It will easily sleep a family of four 
and you could even do a family of six with this booth area. This does turn into a bed. The entire length of the bed is about 71 inches. So that's just an inch shy of six feet. So you'll easily be able to squeeze two kids or even an adult here. Over here, we have the bunk beds for the children. And these are just about twin size in width. The length on this bottom one is 70 inches and the top one is 71 and a half inches. So just a half inch shy of six feet. So you can definitely put teenagers or small kids, no problem here. One thing that I really appreciate is this bunk bed does move out of the way. So during the day, if you're not gonna be using this top bunk bed, you can you know, close this up and there is a latch right here that you latch in. And then this area becomes very open and it feels like you have a lot of room in here. And this right here has a backboard, so you'll, you're able to use this as a lounge or a couch area. And then of course you could sit four people at the booth. And this booth is quite large, as you can see, if I'm sitting right here, I can easily eat right here. We could put a child right here. The entire trip we were out with the MDC crew, my daughter, we had this always set down into a bed. We were actually using the top bunk always as a storage area. We were putting extra stuff up there. It's just the three of us, my wife and my daughter, but we were sitting at this every single morning having breakfast and it was very, very comfortable. The trailer was nice and toasty. We never did turn this into a bed. You can easily turn this into a bed and have, you know, five to six people in this trailer. I'll show you how that turns into a bed in just one second, but I want to mention the main bed. This is a queen size mattress and this is actually a residential this is not the standard mattress that comes with mdc they have a pillow top mattress about seven inches thick and they do measure 60 by 80 this the residential style but we were out camping and so i actually brought my <laughs> this is about a 13 inch memory foam topper mattress this is our guest bed mattress and when we go out camping if the rv has a queen size bed area we'll always throw our mattress on here and we sleep well just as good as we do at home this to me personally is extremely important because let's let's just be real if i'm gonna buy a camper I want to have a comfortable place to sleep. The main reason why I personally want a camper is for a comfortable bed. The main reason why ladies usually want a camper is for a bathroom. So like if you buy a camper and you don't have a bathroom and you don't have a comfortable bed, it's kind of silly in my opinion. So to me, to have a space where you can put a queen size mattress to me is one of the most important things because I can then go buy whatever mattress I want and be able to stick it in my personal RV or trailer and sleep like a baby. And my camping adventures are really, really fun when I sleep good. Another nice feature that's gonna keep you comfortable on a rainy, cold day while you're out camping is this area to lounge and be able to, you know, sit back and watch a TV. You're gonna be able to bring this TV out right here. And whoever's sitting over here lounging in this area, they're gonna be able to view the television. Whoever's sitting in the booth right here is also going to be able to view the television. Another thing that adds to your comfort is these incredible Sirocco fans. These things move a lot of air and you have multiple throughout. You have one in your booth area over there and then you have this one right here and then you have one over by your bed right over here. And these things, like I mentioned, they push a lot of air they move a lot of air in this trailer you're able to adjust these and move them in a lot of different directions as well and then you have the speeds multiple speeds and then you also have a timer that you can set well where it will run and though and the amperage that these use is like i think it's like not even a half an amp it's like nothing these things are ultra efficient you'll see these in yachts all the time because they're so efficient and they move a lot of create a lot of airflow in the camper Okay, let me show you how this is made into a bed. So if you do have a guest or you're trying to sleep a family of five or six, uh, I'm just gonna move these over here to the counter top really quick. And this is pretty cool and I've never quite seen a table like this before. Uh, under here, there's two latches. You pull them towards you and then the table lifts right off there and then it drops down 
and it will clip right there. And then this guy, there's a little switch and then you just turn it and it locks up there and then it drops right down. And then you grab one of the cushions here and then the trailer comes with an additional cushion that fits right into this space. And if you really want to, you can flip it around, you can turn it into a nice lounge and be able to watch movies right here. Or you can just take this out and make it into a bed. That's almost six feet for an adult. So let's turn this back up into a table, show you how easy that is. Uh, and I'll also show you those latches underneath it. So when you lift it up, you can see these right here. These are those latches. So they lock in and keep it secure to the wall. So another thing I wanna point out is Underneath here, we have 120 volt outlet, and you also have 12 volt USB chargers. It's shocking, as we were out camping, I was using my computer and I was able to plug in right there. And you'd be shocked how often there's campers that don't give you enough outlets. And if you're working remote, or even if you're just on a trip, it's nice to have lots of outlets. And that goes in and locks in just like that. So there you have it with the comfort of the MDC 17 family, lots of space for a good size family. I wanna move on to now something else that adds to your comfort and that's your storage because in order to be comfortable, you wanna bring your stuff with you. And there is a tremendous amount of storage in this trailer. So let's get to the storage. The MDC has plenty of storage inside and outside of the trailer. The very first camping trip I went on, I was a little worried, but as we started stocking up, we were stocking for four adults and a child. And towards the end, I was like, there's extra cupboards that we're not even using. So all of this cabinetry, it does have a high gloss veneer. So it's easy to wipe down if it gets dirty. Also, everything comes with a locking latch. So you pr press this button and then you twist it to open up the door. You can see it locks in right here. You also have soft close mechanisms with gas struts that hold it open. You have a lip right here that, so stuff's not gonna fall out on you. You can put bins and just tons and tons of storage up here. And like I mentioned, you're able to drop it down and it doesn't slam. It has that soft close. And then you can lock it. So when you're off-road and the trailer's getting jostled back and forth, it's not going to swing open and have your stuff fly out. This is a Falcutta plywood. So this is not a honeycomb. We've dealt with other campers, off-road campers and campers in general over the year. And if you're gonna do any type of wood, you want solid wood. You don't want a particle board. You don't want honeycomb. Honeycomb and heat and cold tends to expand and retract and have a lot of issues. So as you can see, you have nice gloss, I love the two-tone, how they have the dark gray, um, and then you have the white cabinets down below. These storages right below the booth, you have this on both sides, and you're able to open this up. My daughter was able to fit all of her clothes in this one drawer. And then on the other side, we were able to fit a bunch of toys and miscellaneous stuff for her, for her you know, coloring books and just things to keep her entertained. Over here above the bedroom, you do have these storage compartments as well. And I was putting most of my clothes and my wife's clothes in here. These are not super deep. They're decent for shirts and socks and uh, underwear, whatever else you have. My wife has these little organizer bags that you can stick them in and they work really nice. Now, another thing is, like I mentioned earlier in one of my video in the tour, uh, we only have one child with us. And so this bunk bed was not being used. So we actually put it down and we were using this as extra storage space. And you can do that, it's an option. Moving over here, we have a storage compartment underneath the refrigerator and got a few little things that will fit in there. Not super deep, Some manuals and boxes. Of course you have the storage right here and this is a perfect pantry and this duels as the inside outside area and then you have the storages storage along the sides of it and underneath it behind 
us in the kitchen. This kitchen has massive amounts of storage that you can see throughout. And this is very deep. This is the whole depth of the cabinet. You have drawers that come out for food and miscellaneous storage throughout. Over here, we had our pots and pans that we were storing in this area. And of course you have another storage area down here, two shelves. I love these drawers right here. Um, you have, you know, you could put cutlery up here like we have in there right now. But for me, I was putting my, you know, flashlights right here, my knives, keys, just things that I need to get access quickly. I could open the door and grab it really fast and then shut that up. And of course you have two more. And these are pretty deep, all real wood on full extension tracks with locking latches, very important. Coming up here, you have additional storage above all of this area. There's also storage in the bathroom area that I wanna show off and point out one thing that I thought was a nice touch was these, this is all a molded fiberglass and this is a wet bath, but they actually put these rubber seals right here. And we had our toilet paper in here and it never got wet. Not saying that's it's not possible, but I did notice that that seemed to seal these cupboards pretty well. And you have, you had some shelves right here and we had a bunch of stuff stowed in there. Of course you have a nice little uh, spot to put your soaps and some of your extra stuff while you're showering up here. Now I wanna go and showcase the storage on the outside as well. So the outside storage is abundant as well. This is that indoor outdoor storage that we've already showed cased. Of course, this is not storage, but a place to put stuff. Now you do have a little compartment right here, and this is actually designed for you to bring the television outside. So if you are out tailgating and you're into that, you have that option at least, and you have your outlets and your plugs here. But I personally, while I was traveling, I actually used this as a place for stuff for my kitchen. I had, you know, I had some spices in here, became kind of like my little spice rack area, I guess. I had my oil, you know, to grease things. So that was a nice little feature. All my spatulas were in here. Obviously you have these storage areas as well for spatulas. One of my spatulas was just quite large and it wouldn't fit in here. And I had this filled with other things I wanted. So that's why it went in there. So you can always get creative. It's your own trailer. And when you get it, there's just things that you can do like that. In my family, there's only three of us. So we don't really need a second refrigerator. That refrigerator inside is sufficient for my family. The reason why I was using the fridge is because I brought we, I was trying to feed the camera guys and half of the crew at MDC. But personally, if I were to keep this trailer indefinitely for myself, I would probably cover these holes and make this into a storage slide out tray and be able just to put more supplies and whatever I want in here. My, maybe my camping chairs, there's still space for camping chairs on the other side, but you know, I could just utilize this in a different way. Coming over here, these storage compartments are very deep and very large. You come down into here and it's hard to see, but I can barely reach the bottom. So they go all the way up to there. And this whole thing, and it's sealed pretty well. You can see that there's this lip right here. And so if it rains, it's gonna come down and it will roll away from that area. So that is gonna keep things nice and clean in there. And there's also good gaskets that seal everything up. I had most of my firewood in this compartment while we were out traveling. And this right here is your compartment to store your propane bottles. The units standard come with a 20 pound propane tank, but you can upgrade to a 30 pound propane tank if you would like. Coming over to here, we have another storage compartment similar to the other side. Uh, and I had a bunch of camp chairs in here. My camp chairs are small and compact and they fit nicely in between these jerry can holders, but it does come stock with a jerry can holder. If you wanted to, you could remove those and put storage in here and same, same design. One of the things that they do have is this patent front compartment design where it's more aerodynamic and also allows you for a sharper turning radius with your tow vehicle. One thing I do wanna point out is you can put clips on this to hold these in place or you could put padlocks to 
lock this front storage compartment. So in case you put something valuable in there, you're able to lock it up. Now coming over here, we have another storage compartment and all of these are lockable. And this side right here, you do have a light that you can access. And we have currently all the canvas. This is the canvas for the annex. You also have a shower room in here and poles. You can, if you're going out camping, you know you're gonna use that. Obviously you're gonna keep it in here. If you're going on a trip where you're not gonna use it, take it out and you have a massive amount of storage. This thing is huge, look at this. You can get an idea of how much, how long that storage is and that's not even hitting the fridge slide yet. Also, I love how when they do store things in here, they put a spot for this awning tool where they can actually clip it in and it stays out of the way. That tool is to be able to manually crank out your awning in case the electrical motor wasn't working or you had some battery issues. And there you have it for your storage. The next thing I wanna go over is the bathroom in this and then we'll move on to some of the appliances. Moving into the bathroom area and this door, it's all fiberglass, so it's easy to clean. As you come into the bathroom area, one thing that I do want to mention is this is a one piece mold. So you can see right here, there's no seams. There's no caulk right here. There's no caulk down here. There's no caulk around the corners and the bottom of the shower. This is a one piece molded fiberglass. And what that means is you're not gonna have leaks, you're not gonna have maintenance. You can see that there's caulk along the roof line, but you're not gonna have water spraying up there, so that doesn't matter. That's how these work. I think this is a very important design, and this is a wet bath. And what that is, it's, it's the toilet and the shower and the sink all combined into one area. You're gonna see this on yachts. It's very popular in yachts. My wife personally loves this because it's like super easy to clean. And after you shower, you almost pretty much rinse down the toilet and everything. So the, your area, this area stays very clean and sanitary because when you shower, if you shower, shower every day, your entire bathroom is getting clean every day. Of course, you do have a little sink right here, hot and cold water to be able to, you know, get ready for bed, do your brush, brushing your teeth, wash your hands. You do have these storage compartments down here as well. This is your drain plug, which you have to turn on and off while you're out using it. A mirror, <laughs> it seems obvious, but sometimes, Trailer manufacturers forget to put mirrors in bathrooms. I don't know why, but that happens a lot. Above me, we have the fan and this opens up and you're able to turn that on. There's also lights in this dome vent, which is pretty cool. We also do have an upgraded fan that we can install in these trailers to like a Max Air or Fantastic Vent Fan. And the airflow on those is probably, I don't know the exact <laughs> amount of airflow, but probably five to 10 times more airflow in and out. But these ones work great and that's not essential to do. Um, coming over to here, we have our toilet area and our shower. So this shower right here obviously is gonna move up and down and you can adjust this. If you're very tall, you're able to get it high and have plenty of space in here. And speaking of the space in here, you actually have six foot five ceilings so you're not going to have any issues if you're <laughs> six feet or all the way up to six foot four, you might start scratching your head on that vent. Floor to ceiling throughout the trailers is just over six foot five. So you have a lot of headroom in this trailer. Now, another thing that people want to always see is what if I'm showering in here and I drop a bar of soap, am I able to pick it up? So let's pretend this is a bar of soap and say I drop it and I'm showering and I need to, you know, I need to bend over and pick it up. There's space in here to pick up a bar of soap. So there you go. That's the soap drop test. We always do that on every tour, just so you know. Now, the last thing I want to talk about in the bathroom area is this toilet. And this is a cassette toilet. And I'm going to show you on the outside how this toilet works. Okay. So this little door is your cassette toilet. One of the things that I really like about this toilet is it has its separate water tank so if you're out camping and you run out of water in your main tanks for washing your hands drinking showering 
you can go and fill up water. You can go down to a stream and pick up some water and put it into this, and you're not contaminating your main water tanks because this toilet has its own separate. We were traveling in really extreme cold temperatures, so I actually put antifreeze into this. You can see it looks like it's pink, and that doesn't matter because it's not going into my main water tanks and contaminating my water. So you're gonna fill it up with this little guy right here. You're gonna open this, and then you'll fill up the water into there. And that water is what's used to flush the toilet. Now, when you are done using it, after a while, you'll pull this out. And this is a cassette toilet. And this is one of my favorite features is this actually comes up and then you can actually take this on vacations with you. This becomes your carry-on. It's the right size to fit in the overhead bins in the airplanes, just so you are aware. And if you don't want to take it on vacation, you can close this up, get to a dump station, you open that and you dump it. It's really easy. People in the US are not as familiar with the cassette toilets. Uh, they're becoming much, much more popular. I love them just because they give you the ability to stay off grid a lot longer and sometimes people will buy a second one just to have it so you can pull it out and put the second one in and then you can take that take this unit down in your truck and go dump it in a, to a toilet like at a vault toilet in the wilderness there's a toilet over there right there we could just go and dump it in there that's the cassette toilet there you have it they're pretty sweet systems the next thing oh and to protect anybody from stealing your poo you can lock it, just so you know. The last thing that we're gonna talk about bathroom wise is this little guy right here. That's a slot, that's a track where, you, where you're able to slide in a room, a canvas room that comes out. I mean, that will come out and right here, we have a shower and this is hot and cold water that you'll be able to set out. And this, it has a little plastic clear portion right here. So you can have a light while you're out showering. So you can shower in the dark. The nice thing about this setup is if you are say at the beach and you don't want to use the inside shower and fill up the water tanks, you're going to able, be able to shower out here and just let it run off on the ground. Now, let's talk about some of the components. First being the water heater. The water heater that MDC uses is the Truma AquaGo. Now, in my opinion, Truma is one of the best manufacturers for appliances. This is an on-demand water heater. So what that means is you'll flip on a switch inside and this thing will just engage and within seconds, you'll have hot water at the tap and it's continuous, it's forever. So there's no tank in here, this is tankless. So it's gonna, you'll be able to take a shower as long as your water is in your tank. I took a long shower the very first one cause I was so dirty and I felt disgusting. I was running around all day and I went in there and I drained, I think the entire water tank taking a hot shower, which was really nice. And I didn't run out of water the entire time. Of course, you do have a city inlet right here. So if you do pull into a campground, you could plug directly into the city water and then you could have pressurized water and this bypasses your water tanks and your water pump and then you'll have instant water continuously forever and you could just take showers as long as you want if you're at a campground. If you're off grid, you wanna be wise about your water usage. And then moving over from your water heater, we have your furnace. This is your heater and this is what's gonna keep you warm and it does. The whole trailer stays nice and toasty. We've been in it in 20 to 40 degrees for over a week and this kept the trailer nice and warm the whole time. This is a 12,000 BTU Dometic furnace. So here we are inside. This is the, the furnace. This is a single port furnace. So it heats up the main cabin without any issues. This is your thermostat and you're just gonna adjust your temperature down here to whatever you want. Now we have previously removed these thermostats and we've put in digital thermostats and those tend to be a little bit easier to set and dial in the exact temperature that you want. This unit does take about 3.4 amps per hour which is very very efficient and of course it's run by propane and if you're thinking about summer then you're probably wondering what does it have for air conditioning 
And of course, I mentioned those fans earlier, and those things are ultra efficient. They almost use zero power. But if you are somewhere where it's really hot and the fans aren't going to do enough for you, you have an air conditioning system. And this is a 13,500 BTU Dometic Penguin 2. And this thing will push out a lot of cold air. It works very, very good. We do also here at ROA have a modification where we've upgraded this AC unit to a different unit that's a little bit more quiet. Also, you can set the temperature to that exact temperature similar to the thermostat where you can set 72 degrees so the dehumidifier has a heat pump but this unit stock right out of the box works great and it will cool the trailer down tremendously and i think in, in almost any climate in america so there you have it you got your air conditioning system your furnace and your water heater keeping you warm cold and clean Now I want to get into some of the components that are running all of the things that we've been talking about. And most of your electronics and components that are operating the trailer are going to be underneath this bed area right here. And so I'm going to pull this one up first and showcase this. Just did a walkthrough on this trailer the other day and the guy came in and he's like, wow, that inverter is way bigger than it looks on photos. This is a 2000 watt continuous and a 4000 watt surge. This is an Ames. This company is out of Reno, Nevada. And then down here we have the Life Pro. These are UL rated. So these are great quality batteries. This is a 200 amp hour lithium battery. And then you have a bunch of management systems through here. You have fuses, wiring, everything is really clean in here. I don't know if you can see, everything is just run very nicely. You have fusing, you have a shunt in here, this BM Pro system, this is a monitoring system, and this controls all of your systems from your solar charge controllers to your DC to DC charging system from your truck to your shore power. The comparable system that I'm aware of is the red arc in australia this is an australian company and this will operate and run everything in your coach in your camper right here look at this i want to point out just some of these these battery straps are metal they're very strong and robust they put little foam pads in between this to keep it protected and then you can see it sits down in this encasing down below under here you have uh some of your water systems to the side where all your water is coming and going in this area. So it's really easy to access uh, and also easy to winterize. You can add on a valve right here. We actually do have a modification where we could add a easy winterization valve right here with a pigtail so you can easily winterize your trailer when you're not using it. One thing I do wanna point out right here is I love how they carpeted the wheel well. That's better for soundproof, also insulation. And then also this is enough space to add an additional battery. We do have an upgrade where we've been adding more batteries in these trailers. So you have that stock 200 amp hours of lithium, but we've been adding or doing 600 amps of lithium that we can fit into this area easily. Uh, and I just wanna point out one thing, and this is kind of a random detail, but I love how they actually really care enough to cover things and just you know make everything look very clean. This is underneath the bench you're never going to see that there's really not a reason for you to cover it other than just pride you have pride in your product you have pride in your work and this is something that i've noticed throughout the build as i've been going through it you can see down here all of this wire everything is covered in this corrugated plastic right here i have not seen behind the build yet inside the walls but as i've asked questions and they've explained it to me they say in every single stud there's going to be rubber grommets and they're going to put the the wiring through those rubber grommets in this plastic as well so you can see right here how they have the little mounts but these are rubber ones so they're not metal and so and then they also put it in this protective plastic so this is just the wiring is not going to be rubbing when you're off-roading and having tons of vibrations it's going to stand up for a long long time and that's really important and coming to the outside of this these electronic components you can see that they have put in ventilation throughout which is really important 
because all of those components can get warm and they do need to have air to breathe. Also, you have a button right here and that engages your inverter, which allows you to be able to run your microwave off grid, off of batteries. I wanna show you the monitoring system that they have. You'll open this above the refrigerator and this is your BM Pro and you can see this, it's currently at 13.1 volts. That's with all the lights on. You can see we have an output of 21 amps currently going out of the batteries. And this little picture of the sun means you get you have solar coming in. If you have a DC Anderson plug on your truck and you were to plug it in, it would show a picture of a car. And if you were to plug it into your house or shore power or generator, you'd see a picture of a little outlet. So it's very easy. It's, it's kind of foolproof. You just plug it in, unplug it, and it just does its thing. There's no switches you have to push, push, or there's nothing you need to turn on or off. It's just all automatic through the BM Pro. This is your main battery disconnect. So when you are in storage, you're able to shut this off and turn off your batteries. And then you have a bunch of buttons here that turn on your water heater, your water pumps, and your gauges, and then also your toilet and fridge and your DC outlets. So of course, when you're out camping, you'll want to turn on a lot of these things to be able to utilize your components. Well, we're talking about solar too. On the rooftop, we actually have 700 watts of solar. And it's not just the amount of solar that you have that's important, but it's also how it's installed. And all of these panels are elevated with brackets off the roof. And what that means is they're gonna have proper airflow. They're gonna not get as hot. And when solar panels don't get as hot, they're more efficient. So that air gap is really important. A lot of mounted or flat panels that get stuck on roofs tend to overheat. And a lot of times the cells will burn out. It's just not an efficient way to have solar installed on your camper. So not only do you have a lot of solar, but it's installed in the most efficient way possible. Another electronic component that you're gonna want to look at is your gauges for your water tanks and your gray tanks. And this has your front freshwater your rear and your gray tank as well. The specs will be coming soon on all the capacities of those. Right over here, we do have a uh, stereo system and you do have an auxiliary and a Bluetooth capability to be able to listen to music. And you also have speakers inside and out so you can enjoy that time. One of the other things that I love about the 17 family is all the light. And it's not just the LED lights, but it's the natural light. There's tons and tons of light in this trailer. There's lights over by the booth. You have windows by the bed. You have a dome above the bed that gives you light. Each bunk bed has a light, but there's a time and a place for light. And I really like light, but when I don't like light, as a matter of fact, I hate light, is at nighttime when I'm trying to sleep and this unit gives you both incredible light but it also gives you incredible darkness so we close up these blinds and we can go and start shutting off all of these lights <clears throat> you come down hit the switches right here boom we can uh cover the blinds right here we're gonna want to close that we're gonna want to Close that one. Now over here. And if you're one of those people that, you know, just enjoys taking a nap, now we get up into bed. And of course, we're gonna wanna close the blind. Nice and tight. Close the blind, nice and tight. And now, last but not least, we're gonna close this, and then in the middle of the day, we're gonna go to bed. Ah, nice and cozy. Now that it's dark in here in the middle of the day, I think I'm gonna take a little nap and I'll be back to show you the lights on the outside. 20 minutes later. Woo, good morning. That was nice, quick little power nap. You know, the guys just took the drone up into the air and it was buzzing around. So I turned this fan on full blast and it became like nice little white. 
I just, you know, 20 minutes later, ready to show you these windows. So as you can see, they black out pretty nicely, but you also have a screen and this is a pretty fine screen, which means the little bugs aren't going to be able to get in very easily. And this screen does go up and out of the way. And then of course you have pretty nice windows. These windows latch in a lot of different places. So you have a little button you press and these will unlatch and they have three different settings. Once you hear that click, you stop and it allows some air to come in, but you can go even higher and have some more airflow. And then you can go all the way up and have tons of airflow. If you open up all your windows, turn some fans on, you're at the beach, you can pull the screen down. You're going to get incredible airflow through here in this trailer. And then if you just go up past the click, it will drop back down. These are windows are called a Eurovision. And one thing that they have a feature is that actually has two settings. So if you bring this up and you go into this slot right here, the window is actually cracked. So if you're out somewhere cold, you want to avoid some condensation, you can let some air in here. Or if you're somewhere hot and you want to turn on the fan, go out hiking, you can leave this open to get some air into the trailer. Then to close it all the way, you bring it all the way past that slot and that's locked in and these windows seal up very well they're also dual pane windows and they are a polycarbonate uh, so they're not glass it's a, a polycarbonate acrylic blend and a lot of people ask well so they're plastic that sounds cheap why is it not glass the reality is in an off-road situation you would it, polycarbonate or acrylic is better than glass because it's durable the actual a uh, brake resistance on these is it's almost 200 times stronger than glass. So if you have a rock chip fly up, the, the odds of this breaking versus glass is very low. We've actually thrown baseballs at these. I threw a giant rock at one, did end up breaking it with a giant rock, but the baseball did not break it. So if you're out with your kids and they throw a ball into this window, it's a very low chance of actually breaking. If you're on the trails and a branch swings and hits it, we have had branches hit these windows and they have not broken. So polycarbonate, dual pane windows, very strong and robust and good for the off-road world. So now that you've seen the lighting and how bright it is in here to how dark it is in here to the windows, let's go and talk about the lights on the outside of the trailer. And as I am walking out, you can see we have some under cabinet lights. You have this brown molding light, which is very nice. It's good for ambience. You have your can lights, which are your main lights. You also have your nighttime lights down by the floor. So you can leave those on and you're not gonna be tripping. <laughs> you have this lighting down along the floor. And then you have this will well light right here and the switch goes right there, turns on and off. You also have spotlights in the front and rear of the trailer. Another thing that I want to point out is these are all your switches for your outside lights and you have, they're all labeled. So you have your outside lights, you have your left side, you have your right side. This is going to be your passenger side, which is right and your left side, which is your driver side. So if you look up here on this outside lights and you put on the yellow light, you're going to have yellow lights up here. And then if you turn off the yellow light and you turn on white, the white is going to be a little bit brighter for colder weather. That might be nice. But if you're in the summer and you're trying to avoid the bugs, you turn on the yellow light and you have this on the driver's side as well. You have your light bar in the rear. And then also we have a backup camera that comes with the unit coming over to here. I mentioned that you have lights on this side as well. This is your bathroom light, but you also might wonder why else would you need a light out here? Check it out. If you pull into a campsite, it's late at night. You need to fill up your water stations. You have a light right here where you're able to easily be able to see what you're doing. Also the shower enclosure in here is also so you can shower in the dark. But to me, I have pulled up to campsites late at night and I am trying to plug in my power cord. I'm trying to fill up my water or plug into city water. And they're generally in America, there are no lights on the driver's side of trailers. And I've noticed this is kind of a nuisance. So you're out there with a flashlight 
with the MDC, you can just turn that light on, be able to get to camp and get all set up easily. Same thing goes with the front as well. You're like, why do you need a light bar or a, a light in the front of your trailer? Well, when you pull into a campsite, you're out in the wilderness and it's pitch black outside, you turn on all these lights, you can see the whole campsite area, and it's really easy to be able to hook up and unhook back into this trailer. Backing into a trailer in the dark is extremely hard. If you turn that light on, it makes your life a lot easier. Let's head on over to the door and the awning area. This awning, it's a little complex to set up. You have to open the door, uh, push the switch and press the button and then it automatically extends. Like I said, pretty complex, right? I mean, it uses a lot of, you have to use a lot of muscle to get it out. While that awning comes out, I do wanna showcase this door cause this is a pretty cool door. This is called an Aussie Traveler and it actually latches and opens and, and comes apart. And then you have a screen, and this is a metal screen, very strong. You can put the dogs in there and they're not gonna be able to jump out. You can also lock it, so if you're out camping or going on a hike, you can leave the dog in there, crack a window, get some airflow going in there, and it's not gonna be able to escape, and you can also lock it. This also is called a tri-mark and it has three locking mechanisms. If you look at this, when you open this up, it engages here and here. So when you're actually off-roading, I've taken trailers, like American built trailers, and I've gone around, you know, some windy canyons and the whole trailer kind of bends and twists a little bit. And I've had cabinet doors or actual doors popping open. If, with this door, when you are lock it, there's no way that this is opening because it, it engages in multiple spots. And then, of course, you have the polycarbonate window on the front of this, and then you're able to shut it up. This, the nice diamond plating, and you also have a latch back here that holds it in place open. Right by the door, this light bar actually illuminates, and there's a switch right hidden in the back of it and it is that amber yellow to deter the bugs. Now the awning is all the way out and the awning does have these legs that you slide out and they come down and you're able to bring this down and it has some stake points so you can stake it into the ground and make it nice and secure. And you can also put one side up higher or lower and allow some sort of pitch so you can have the water run off of it. Also, the 17 family comes with an annex. And what that is, is it has an entire room enclosure that comes out and gives you walls around this entire area. It will actually come out beyond here. So you can access the refrigerator from inside the annex and the entire kitchen area. You can look down here, there's actually clips right here and it has a canvas that drops down and then it actually goes along the floor, covers the entire floor, and this entire space is enclosed. So you're, you're about seven foot seven inches wide on the trailer itself. The annex is 14 foot five inches. So you're doubling your entire living space. So if your kids have friends, you can throw out cots and literally double the size of the trailer. Another thing that's really cool is in hot weather, it acts as a nice shade area or in rainy weather, it's gonna act as a protectant area. And there's a lot of staking points that you're able to stake it down and really keep it nice and tight. Another thing is the awning does come with these brackets. You can install this mounting area and you can slide the awning into right here. And then it actually locks in right there and you can have that out of your way. If you're very tall, you might hit your head on that. So your other option is just to stake it to the ground but really nice awning, easy to use. It's just by the press of a button and it's out and ready to go. And as I mentioned earlier during the storage section, there is a tool inside that's mounted to the wall and that tool would go into this little area right there. There's a little hexagon and you can slide that in there and you can manually crank in or out the awning. So if the motor, for whatever reason, there was an issue, you can manually retract it.
Now, one of the things that I want to talk about is the construction. Everybody wants to know how is it constructed. This is a diamond plate and it is an aluminum diamond plate. And then above this, this is also an aluminum and it's a composite. So it's a sandwich composite aluminum. And there is some actual rigidity in that panel. So it does create some structural integrity. And then inside is an, a welded, a rectangular hollow stud welded aluminum skeleton. So you do have studs that are all aluminum and in between those studs, you're gonna have a foam board insulation. So they are insulated. Like I said, we've been camping in them in cold weather and they, they, the box, the inside box stayed nice and warm for us. We, we were very, very comfortable. Didn't even have the heat on full blast. The actual floor is a zero wood composite material. So if you're doing some river crossings, you're driving, you know, in the snow, mud, rain, that splash up, it's not going to rot out the floor because it's all composite material. Moving on to the back area, we have the Good Ride mud terrain tires. These are a 65 75 with a 16 inch rim. These are load range E tires and they're actually rated for just over 3000 pounds on a dual axle. So the weight rating on these tires all the way around is over 12,000 pounds, which exceeds the trailer's overall weight. Coming around here, I want to point out the, ch the actual chassis. You can see it over here and in the front area, the chassis is a hot dipped galvanized steel. MDC is very proud of their drawbar and their chassis to the point that they give it a lifetime warranty. The reason why MDC is so confident in giving a lifetime warranty on their chassis is because they go through a factor five testing. It's engineered to meet five critical factors for strength and durability. It's actually called a finite element analysis and this F EA testing is done by a third party company and they test the suspension, the chassis, the drawbar, the safety chains, the attachment points. This testing proves that the strength and durability of every MDC camper is truly built for off-road. I want to start out with talking about the steel. They use a higher grade steel and I'm not an engineer by any means and I'm just going off of what I've been told and from what I understand, it's a Q345 grade of steel, which is similar steel that you're going to see in a bridge or boats or cargo ships. So it is very thick and very strong and robust. It's a two by six tubular steel and it is all galvanized. Now galvanized is a process you don't see on a lot of trailers here in America. Essentially this frame is dipped into a molten bath of zinc and chemicals that adhere to the steel and it makes it very corrosion resistant and not, not proof. It's, it, it can still corrode over time, but generally things that are galvanized are going to be freeway signs. If you go to the ocean and you see piers and things that are right on the ocean, they're all going to be galvanized. And the reason why you galvanize that still is because generally galvanization is going to last over a hundred years in the harshest of climates. Regular steel, bare bone steel, the second it's forged and gets into the atmosphere, it starts to deteriorate and rust essentially. It starts to break down immediately. When you galvanize it, it gives that coating that will make it last, well, hopefully longer than you live. And that's what's so great about this chassis. And that's why they're so proud of it. And that is truly makes it off-road and very strong and robust. And it's going to stand up a lot of abuse in the off-road here in the US, period. Speaking of off-road, there are certain things that I believe are very important to consider a trailer off-road and not just a strong chassis and strong frame, but also a hitch and suspension that is made for off-roading. Right here, we have the DO35, and this is an articulating hitch. It's made by Cruise Master from Australia. And as you can see, it's going to articulate 
up and down and this is for those washes and then it's also going to articulate side to side it actually can go 360 degrees which you shouldn't ever go 360 degrees because that means you're upside down either your trailer or your truck is upside down but this allows for when you're hitting those corrugations and those side to side camber instead of twisting the truck and the trailer the hitch twists and that makes a lot of sense. Another thing that I want to talk about to really consider the trailer off-road is over here, you'll see the tough tracks. And this is a pr proprietary suspension system that MDC has created and designed. Once again, they've put everything through CAD design. A lot of their designs are being designed in Australia and then they send it to the plant to actually have it built and then they test it. And their suspension, if you get under this trailer and look at the suspension and compare it to any other trailers that are claiming to be off-road Australian trailers designed or inspired. These suspension arms are very robust, very strong, probably almost twice as thick as what you're going to see on anything else. Also the gas shocks, the, the diameter of the gas shocks and the reservoirs are much larger and that's going to allow for less overheating of shocks and shock failure. Uh, just all the way around, the suspension is very strong, very robust. You can see they have camber settings. They have the ability to easily adjust the alignments on these trailers. Also the mega hub. These hubs have some of the largest spindles in the industry in Australia currently. And inside of the, the hub, you have genuine Timken bearings. You will want to get these and service these at least annually. They recommend three or so thousand miles. And that might seem like a lot, but it's really not. You don't generally put that many miles a year on a trailer if you're in state. Of course, if you're doing cross country traveling, you will put 3000 miles and just like your car, you are gonna change out the oil. You'll also wanna get these serviced at least once a year. And the cool thing is MDC has a masterclass series online on YouTube and they teach you how to do all of these services. They teach you what to torque your lugs at. They teach you how to do your bearings. If you don't wanna do that, you can pull into a Les Schwab and they're gonna be able to do that for you easily. Another thing talking about about not just the suspension, but the towing experience. These trailers are very well balanced. I've been towing this trailer over a thousand miles, 70 to 80 miles per hour on the highway, and I've had no issues with sway, and I'm towing with a power wagon. I've also towed it with an F-150, towed phenomenally. But they do have a system on it called Trail Assure. And what this is an electronic sway control system. So if the trailer ever did get a little bit out of control, it automatically will break your trailer system and try to straighten it out and get you safe on the road again. Similar to like an ABS type of system in a car, but this is for your trailer for anti-sway essentially. And that actually leads me to the brakes on these trailers. Obviously we got four wheels on the ground, so you have four 12 inch drum brakes and those are electromagnetic drum brakes and they work. Let me tell you, I've driven a lot of trailers over the years, off-road trailers, and sometimes you get some off-brand drum brakes that are not really good. These brakes on this trailer, they work phenomenally. I have my uh, trailer brake system in my truck set up to around three, four, or five at any given time. If I turn it up to seven or eight, I can engage those trailer brakes and they will lock up. So they work really, really well. I've had issues in the past with trailers where, you know, they were cheap brakes and I would pull out their brakes and you'd put new drum brakes like a Dexter hub and brakes assembly or disc brakes, whatever. But these brakes have been very impressive. Also, you have an e-brake that's integrated into the system up here. So when you're actually at camp, you can pull this up and that will help break your wheels. I still would recommend chalking your brakes no matter what. Up front here, this is the Arc Jockey Wheel. This is the 750 series. Uh, the nice thing about this is when we, when we hook this up to the truck, this winds up out of the way and it turns and rotates and gets completely away from the frame. So you have lots of clearance. You're not gonna knock this off. Also, in the rare situation, if you were to get somewhere in a, in a hairy situation where you were stuck and you had to recover your trailer, you could technically winch this out and you could drop this trailer down into the lowest position and you could pull the trailer on that wheel. That's the reason why that's designed that way. And then these chains, check these chains out. These chains are massive. And I love how they actually come off and they're integrated into the frame and bolted on right there. These are very strong and I, they're gonna hold that whole trailer up for you. 
And then of course, for the United States, they've added our seven pin and that controls all of your brakes, your lights. And then you also have the Anderson plug. And if you want to get set up on your truck to an Anderson plug, then you could potentially have a higher amperage of charging while driving down the road. And this is integrated right into the BM Pro system. So there's nothing you need to do. You would just have to get the setup on your truck and then you could just plug this in and charge, have a better charge while you're driving down the road. And something else I wanna talk about over here uh, in the United States, we call these stabilizer jacks. Uh, while we were out camping with the MDC group, they actually, uh, I learned that they call them something different. They call them shagalizer jacks. Uh, and this is just to stabilize your trailer a little bit. And it's actually pretty sturdy, but if you're in somewhere where it's windy, you can drop all four corners, bring these down, and it will allow for just some more stability. This is not designed to lift the trailer. It's just designed to stabilize it. Now we do have some upgraded jacks that we get from ARC. It's the Australian company that builds these and the jockey wheel. And they're actually rated for just under 2000 pounds. And you could technically jack up the trailer with those if you wanted to. That's a pretty cool upgrade. And we do that a bunch for people. So take a look at those on our website. Now that we finished up with the construction and the off-road capability and all of the features that make it truly an off-road trailer, I want to mention the specs. The total overall length of this trailer is 23 feet, 2 inches. The box is just about 17 feet. That's where the 17 family comes from. The width of the trailer, total width, is 7 foot 7 inches. With the annex, it goes to 14 foot 5 inches. The total height of the trailer, and this is from the ground to the air conditioning unit, is 10 foot 3 inches. And the inside height from floor to ceiling is just over 6 foot 5 inches. The weight on the trailer is 6,000 85 pounds that is the dry weight this trailer will be half ton pullable any f-150 or 1500 chevy or ram should be able to handle this trailer pretty easily if their tow capacities are 10,000 pounds or so we've pulled this with a power wagon an f-150 and it tows great the fully loaded weight is just over 7,700 pounds and the tongue weight is 595 pounds pounds that's a pretty good tongue weight not going to be too hard on any truck on its tongue that's going to be a half ton towable or anything above that so you can have the propane tank capacities can either be the 20 pounders or 30 pounders and those are around five or to seven and a half gallons each so 10 or 15 gallons of propane depending on what you want to option it at and your water tanks, you have a dual water tank system and each one of these is 21 gallons. So you have a total of 42 gallons of fresh water capacity. Another thing to keep in mind, because some people might say that doesn't seem like a ton of water, the toilet has its own separate water tank and it's about a four gallon water tank. So all in all, you're looking at closer to 47 gallons of total overall water. And the toilets generally take a lot of water from your drinking water. So you can keep on filling this up with any type of water and you won't contaminate your water tanks. So all in all, with the separate water tank for the toilet, you have a decent amount of water. And the uh, overall specs on the battery and solar system, we have 700 watts on the roof and 200 amps of lithium stock with a 2000 watt continuous pure sign inverter built by Ames. Okay, there you have it. Hopefully you have learned something. Hopefully you have appreciated this. I know this is a long tour, but I know the people that are seriously interested in these trailers really appreciate it. At least I hope they do. Make some comments below. If you have any questions, if there's anything that we missed, please let us know and we'll answer either on the comment section or we'll make a video specifically for you. I do want to end with saying a few things about the manufacturer. You know, we have been 
talking to them now for, I don't know, close to six months. We started talking with them last year and I really put them through the ringer talking to them before we brought these on board because we really only wanna be carrying what we consider are the best products in the world. Now, I do wanna say I have a little bit of history with MDC from the past and not so much working with them, but I reached out to them about six or seven years ago because we had brought on a new brand. We were looking to carry some Australian products and we synced up with some brands out there that were Australian inspired and people know about this, the Black Series and the OBI. But as we were looking at carrying some of these brands, I actually found these guys first and I got on YouTube and I started watching their videos and I thought, man, these guys are really cool and they seem to really care about the customers. You can see that you know the owner, Vaughn, goes out and does camping trips with his customers. And that's really cool to me. I always thought I, that really has inspired me to wanna to do those things too. And then I also noticed Steve, he does their masterclass series where he taught, teaches about greasing bearings and setting up the trailers. And, and I could tell that they were a company not just about just pushing a product, but educating their customers and giving value to their customers. And to me, that was really important. So I reached out to them and I said, hey, I wanna carry your guys' trailer because you know, from what I can see, you guys are really leading the market as far as you know, just service and taking care of people, not just building a good trailer, but you know, after self support to me is more important than anything else. Anyway, at that time they said, sorry, we're not working with dealers, we just work direct to consumer. So unfortunately, it took me down a path where we started working with other manufacturers that didn't actually turn out to be that great of manufacturers and we since have moved beyond those manufacturers. But it's all come back to full circle. We've now synced up with MDC years later. They've now moved into the US and in Australia, before they came out, they were direct to consumer. But in the United States, they've realized that the country is so large, so vast, and it's better to have a dealer model where they can have more support throughout the country, where they can have dealers all over the country so they can better support their customers when they need service or warranty. And so they've come out and reached out to us and we're teaming up with them to really help them, you know, enter into the US market. And not just that, they're very excited to show off their product. I believe after spending over a week with them on an off-road adventure, I can tell the owner takes great pride in the product standing behind me. I can tell he goes out and uses it and listens to the feedback to his customers. They were telling us about how they do this a huge adventure in Australia called the Big Red Bash. And they had a caravan last year, they had a caravan over 70 trailers that went out to this. And these are all their customers. You're talking hundreds of people. And for him to go out there and potentially hear criticism or critique or see the problems, that's pretty incredible because what better way can you learn how to improve your product than actually go in camping with your customers? And I thought that was really neat that he was so open to wanting to make this product the best product in the market. And I think they're gonna come into the US and say, hey, listen, we can actually import products into the US and they can be at a high standard with great quality. And I'm really excited to introduce this product into the US and hopefully you'll like this when you come and see it in person. I think it's a lot better in person than what you can ever capture on a photo or in a video. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and go down for more information about this video below. And thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.